Hello and welcome to our Belgium setup guide for F1 23. This is a setup from F1setups.com and we will take you through the fastest car setup around the Belgium circuit. The Spa Francorchamps circuit is a 19 corner circuit with a lap distance of 4.352 miles. There is over 100 meters of elevation change here and with long stretches of the lap spent flat out, a good top speed will be vital for success. For that reason, our setup has got lower aero and altered transmission and firmer suspension than the average track. So let's get started. The first area of the setup is the aerodynamics. Aero is always where we recommend starting on any setup as the amount of downforce your car has will significantly affect the other areas of the setup. Here in Belgium, with the long straights around the Spa circuit and the higher average corner speed, we went a low front aero of 8 and a low rear aero of 11. This circuit is notoriously challenging, so if you are struggling with low grip, then you might want to increase these at first, have a practice, and then work your way down, gradually decreasing the arrow lap after lap until you feel comfortable with the level of grip and increase your quarter speed. Once you've got the arrow configured, next up is transmission. Transmission settings control your car's rotation and stability, and it is split into two parts. We have the on-throttle differential and the off-throttle differential. Essentially here, the lower percentage that you choose, the easier the car will rotate and the less stable that it will be. The on-throttle differential is how easy the car will rotate when you have your foot on the gas and the off-throttle differential is when you have absolutely zero throttle input. Typically, we have the on-throttle slightly higher than the off-throttle, but in Belgium we've actually went the other way around. This means that the car will actually rotate easier with the accelerator pedal pushed down and it will actually be more stable when you completely lift off. This is particularly helpful at the beginning of the lap and it allows some extra stability through Radeon if you do need to lift off the gas. We'd recommend that you set the on-throttle differential to 50% and the off-throttle differential to 60%. If you do find yourself spinning out halfway through a long corner while accelerating then slightly increase the on-throttle differential, perhaps as high as 55%. Generally however you do want to keep this number as low as possible. Following the transmission setup, next up we're going to have a look at suspension geometry. This area typically is fairly standard and Belgium is no different. The top two settings are almost always pushed all the way over to the right and here we have went with a front camber of minus 2.50 degrees and a rear camber of minus 1.00 degrees. For the lower two settings we generally go further to the left. We went with a front toe out of 0.04 degrees and a rear toe in of 0.19 degrees. Altering these settings to anything significantly different will significantly impact your tire wear, so we recommend that you leave this area of the setup as is. If you do want to make some changes to the setup, then the most likely area that you'll want to adjust is suspension. This is because suspension settings are typically the most personal area of the setup and can vary from driver to driver. However, most circuits in F123 require a similar suspension setup, with a few adjustments. Generally, we want the front of the car to be firm and the rear of the car to be towards the softer end of the scale. This means that for Belgium we've set the front suspension to 40, almost at the maximum level of firmness. The rear suspension we've set considerably softer at 17. You'll see this pattern continue with the front anti-roll bar. We've set this to 13 and the rear anti-roll bar at the minimum 1. Next up we have ride height. Here we're going with a ride height of 33 at the front and 36 at the rear. This will allow you to ride a few of the curbs and it will also keep the car from bottoming out at high speed down the long straights. These suspension settings have been set this way so they will be considerably quicker than the presets while maintaining the car's ease of drive. However, if you are struggling with the car and you feel like something isn't right, then please leave a comment below and we'll get back to you with some more personalised advice. Moving onward past the suspension setting, the next area we're going to have a look at are the brakes. In F123 we're almost always going to recommend a brake pressure of 100%. The only time you should consider changing the setting is if you are struggling unlocking the brakes. Here you may want to reduce it by a few percentage, try around 95%. However, if you are running ABS, then keep this at 100% at all times. After the brake pressure, we're going to have a look at the front brake bias. In F123, this setting has proved to be a bit more important than previous games, as the rear of the car has a tendency to lose stability under braking. When this becomes an issue, we want to increase the front brake bias at a slightly higher percentage. For Belgium, we found the best balance to be around 55%, however this area is also quite personal and you can adjust it if you like. We don't recommend adjusting any more than 5% either way, but if you are finding the car not to be stable under braking then this is a good area to look at. And next we're going to move on to the final area of the setup, the tyres and tyre pressure. 
This area is one of the most important in the setup as it significantly impacts A, the grip of the car and B, the level of tire wear that you'll experience throughout the stint. The goal is always to find a balance between these two areas, so we've gone with a front right tire pressure of 22.7 psi and a front left tire pressure of 22.7 psi. On the rear we went with a rear right tire pressure of 20.5 psi and a rear left tire pressure of 20.5 psi. If it is raining, as it often does in Belgium, then you may want to decrease all of these values by 1-2 to two clicks for a little bit of extra grip. If it is raining, then you may want to check out our Belgium Wet Setup, which is a fully wet setup guide designed for driving around the circuit in the rain. You can find this wet setup at f1setups.com. So there we have it, this is our F123 Belgium Setup Guide. This setup is designed for dry or mixed conditions and we will be updating it throughout the year as the game evolves, the handling model evolves and we discover faster and faster ways of running this circuit. So to be sure to bookmark this page and come back in the future for an even quicker guide. Please also remember that setups are only half the battle and the more time you put in the time trial practicing, the quicker you will ultimately be. If this setup worked for you or if it didn't work for you, please leave us a comment below and let us know. So from everyone here at F1Setups.com, thank you for watching and remember, keep it clean at the turn one.